This ClickView enablement module will provide you with that next level of troubleshooting when it comes to ClickView Server Services. This document will cover the function of each service required to run ClickView Service, where to find them, and what to check to make sure that they are running. To understand and troubleshoot ClickView Server 11, one must get acquainted with the services prior to troubleshooting. ClickView Server 11 has six services, of which all can be located on separate machines or on the same machine. Knowing the locations of services is key knowledge to troubleshooting ClickView Server. On a single server install, you can find all of the services in the Windows Services console. The following services exist in ClickView Server 11. ClickView Server handles all front-end work like client requests, control of user documents and permissions, as well as calculations and rendering of all results for clients in ClickView Server. Distribution Service executes reloads and distribution tasks on documents and data sources that can deliver to the ClickView Server. Directory Service Connector integrates with user directory repositories such as Active Directory and LDAP catalogs. Management Service contains the Management Console and its interface and functionality. Also controls the Distribution Service work order that tells QDS, ClickView Distribution Service, which tasks to run and when to trigger them. ClickView Web Server contains the access point and performs clustering functionality as well as AJAX page rendering and front-end authentication pass-through. ClickView Settings Service acts as the service communication interface when IIS is used instead of ClickView Web Server. However, this service must be stopped if you plan on using QVWS. Now let's take a look at where the services are located in the ClickView Management Console. The Management Service status, and location for each service can be found under the Status tab, then Service tab. The list on the left shows the service name, as named under the configuration settings for each service or service cluster. If the location of the service is not stated in the name, click the service name to reveal the machine name in the right pane. Also, if you have clustered services, the machine the service is installed on will only show in the right pane if you click on the cluster name in the service list. If a service shows any other status than running, click the service name to see the service or cluster name's status message. Possible services that can show up in the Services tab are Directory Service Connector, DSC, Management Service, QMS, ClickView Server, QVS, ClickView Web Server, QVWS, Distribution Service, QDS, also called Reload Engine. Note, even if you are running IAS as the web server and the ClickView Settings service installed is running, it will show up as QVWS in the Service Status tab, as well as in the System Tree. Also note that the Management Service, QMS, will not show up in the System Setup tab, since that service is what is driving the Management Console, the interface you're actually using. So, what happens if you cannot reach the Management Console, QMS? Well, a good troubleshooting habit is to make sure that ClickView Management Console service status is showing started in the Windows Services Console, or restart the service and check the status again. Now let's take it one step further on the troubleshooting process. If the QMS service still won't start, also make sure there are no other services or applications using the TCP port 4780 or 4799, since that might interfere with the QMS. You can use DOS commands like task list or netstat to confirm TCP port usage. If you need to dig deeper into the port troubleshooting, watch the video module about ports and protocols. While we're in the services tab, we should also explain how to read the status of each ClickView service in the ClickView Management Console as it is received from the Windows Services. In the Management Console, there are a number of different statuses the ClickView Service service has. The most important being Running, Stopped, Off-Duty, and Unlicensed. Running will show a green icon. It means that the service is running fine and operational. Stopped will show a red icon. It means the service is either 
not running, or cannot be contacted by the ClickView Management service, which holds the ClickView Management console. Off-Duty will show a yellow icon. It is only applicable to QVS. It means the QVS service encountered issues when trying to cluster. For example, clustered node root folders are not the same. Or if unclustered QVS nodes exist on the same network subnet with the same license, which is not allowed. And unlicensed will show a yellow triangle and is only applicable to QVS. It means that the QVS is unlicensed or that the license could not be verified against ClickText LEF server. Make sure that the license is correctly applied under System, License, ClickView Server. Remember earlier I told you that the services are also presented in the Windows Services Console? Let's take a deeper look at a few key points and settings you should be aware of. For example, the status of services here only tells us if the Windows service is running according to Windows or not, and who is running it under the Log On As column. A started ClickView service can have a status of started in the Windows Services Console, but have a status of stopped in the ClickView Management Console. In a scenario like this, the management service, QMS, is probably unable to communicate with the troubled service. So how would you go about troubleshooting this? Well, begin by verifying network connections between services, service account permissions, and Windows Active Directory group policies that might interfere with communications or permissions needed for the services to run properly. Also make sure to check that the services is actually running in the Windows Services Console. If a ClickView server service does not want to start properly, there might be several reasons. A good starting point is to go to the Windows Event Viewer to see if there are any known entries or log files that could tell you what's wrong. For example, an expired password on a service account will most likely show up as access denied. The next step in troubleshooting is to review the services log themselves. Depending on what service you're troubleshooting, log files are located in different locations. You can find the current configuration log locations for services under the settings in the management console. For a deeper dive into how to read and find the server logs, check out the video module called Log File and Analysis. Let me continue to share a few more key points and settings you should be aware of for troubleshooting. Each service has a communication interface, which the management console will use. If communication issues between services seem apparent, it might be a good starting point for you to try to reach the services interface with a web browser to see if the authentication and communication works. So, what is a communication interface and where can I find them? It is a unique URL pointing to a unique service. The URLs are located under the System Setup tab by clicking on each service type nodes folder. Now, to test the communication interface, make sure that you are logged in as the service account that's running the service to get the correct credentials passed to the service. Copy the URL by clicking on the management service and browse the URL in the web browser on the machine that has management services installed. If you're successfully able to communicate, you'll get an XML page describing the WSDL structure. In the case of QDS, something called QDS Service IMPL. You can do this test for all services except for the ClickView server, QVS since this service does not communicate like others. To test communication on the QVS, use Telnet to connect to the machine on TCP port 4747. The command is either Telnet IP address of the QVS server space 4747 or Telnet space hostname space 4747. Remember to start your Telnet client or command prompt as the service account user to get the correct credentials. If you get a blank window in your Telnet session, you have successfully established communication with QVS. If you need to dig deeper into the port troubleshooting, watch the video module called Ports and Protocols. Now that we just covered the ClickView service accounts in both the ClickView Management Console and Windows Service Console, we can take a look at the services account permissions. Confirm which service account is running ClickView Server. 
In our example, we used QV service. A service account is used to run the service under a certain user context. And in ClickView, service accounts need certain permissions to run. A service account can be any local or domain user on the window machine. Any service account running ClickView server service needs membership in the following two local security groups to run properly. Administrators. The administrators group is the local administrator group on the machine where the service is installed. ClickView Administrator. The ClickView Administrators group is the ClickView specific group to allow communication between services and will be located and created whenever a ClickView server service is installed. This group can otherwise be manually created. In summary, a few troubleshooting points to take note. If one or more service doesn't start properly, make sure that the service account has these permissions and then restart the service from the Windows Services Console. Also, if you are logged in as a service account and change its group membership, remember to log out and log back in for the changes to apply. Always make sure that the service accounts have these memberships. Also, if you changed or have to change your service account password, you will need to update all ClickView service password settings from the ClickView service window property area. As a reminder, when you run into ClickView services not starting or not communicating, a great way to troubleshoot these issues is to become familiar with each service required to run ClickView server, where to find them, and what to check to make sure that they are running. A few additional resources and tools you can use include the ClickView help menu. Also, you can view the release notes, reference manuals, article knowledge base, and Click Community.